Here are three reasons Bitcoin is staying resilient to Powell's hawkish remarks. The inversion of the yield curve signals the Fed may compromise in the future, so it's a good sign in part. Bitcoin is trading higher a day after U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell signaled he's prepared to raise interest rates more aggressively. If you watch that video, you'll find out that actually does not mean a hill of beans for the traditional markets or Bitcoin. It has not hurt the markets like they're telling you it has traditionally. The leading crypto uh, change hands at 42,700, yada, yada, yada. Futures tied to the S&P pointing to a 0.32% gain. The index was a little changed on Monday. We will take the necessary steps to ensure a return to price stability. In particularly, or in particular, if we conclude that it is appropriate to move more aggressively by raising the federal funds rate by more than a quarter point at a meeting or meetings, we'll do so. I'll put a 50 basis point increase on the table for the coming months, having raised 0.25% recently, signaled 175 basis points of increases for the entire year. This is not significant. The number to watch is 2%. When it gets over 2%, which would be 200 basis points, that's when the, mar the markets can get a little murky. Risk assets resilience may stem from investors' tendency to be forward-looking. Uh, here are the three reasons. The Fed tightening is already priced in. People already know this is coming. Investors hate uncertainty more than they hate bad outcomes. Recession concerns a blessing in disguise. Forward-looking markets could be focusing on a recession and the prospect of the Fed returning to expansionary monetary policy to support the economy. According to the Fed, funds futures, interest rate derivatives traders are, pri are pricing a rate cut as early as 2023. So after we go through this increase, remember 2% is the number to watch. We're going to go to 200 basis points this year by the end of the year, which is, two, which is or 175, excuse me, 1.75%. Next year, they're already talking about lowering them again. So, so think about that. We're going to get right up against the precipice, right on the precipice of where things could get murky, and then we're going to pull it back again. So think about that. They're, they're thinking about all this, and it's already priced in. The inversion of the curve signals to investors the Fed may compromise in the future, so it's a good sign. Once the economy is in trouble, the Fed could only turn back to the road of quantitative easing. We are seeing a level of deflation right now, the beginning of it. It's not going to be a long period like we originally thought it might be. Based on the macro data, the current economic situation can support the Fed's hawkish policy, but the maximum period will not exceed two years. When we talk about the Bitcoin halving, this is where things get so interesting, okay? Because even if we do see a super cycle, I, I think what we're going to see is we're going to actually see Bitcoin possibly peaking as we go into the halving. Mm. That would be absolutely insane. We would probably see a dramatic dump right after the halving, followed by another move up. This could be how Bitcoin gets to a million dollars in five years, which I don't ultimately think is going to happen, but it could be, you know, one path or one road because. If right as the Bitcoin halving is happening, if they turn the quantitative easing and the, and the money printer back on, then that's exactly what we saw at the beginning of the pandemic. Pandemic began in March. Money printer got turned on way more than it was before. And what happened? We got the massive bull run that we saw. And we could be seeing that all lining up to happen again. Number three, pre-options expiry bump. So Bitcoin's tendency to gravitate towards the so-called max pain point the strike point at which the most open options contracts expire wordlessly out of the quarterly options expiry could be helping the crypto hold ground in the wake of Powell's comments. That's exactly what we talked about yesterday. We talked about how so many people are bearish that we could see this quarter expiry at the end of March be extremely bullish leading in to April. It's the max pain point. So many people have been bearish. It moves bullish. That causes max pain. Max pain is not always on the downside like people would have you think that it is. Um, option contracts were $3.56 billion are set to expire this Friday. Is this Friday the last? Yeah, this is the last Friday. So it's this Friday. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that because next 31st is a Thursday. 31st is a Thursday. That yeah. is correct. So very interesting. 
Um, uh, the, according to theory, Max Payne points acts as a magnet for spot prices. So very interesting uh, looking at that. Uh, then we have this Bitcoin hash rate may see small capitulation with difficulty set for new all-time high. Usually this means prices are going up as well. We're seeing these the difficulty at an all-time high. We haven't seen that over the last several months, but usually that is what we see. Um, they say there appears to be some whale manipulation on my table. I don't know what that means. I think they're talking about the X's. Mr. X. Guys, that's uh, some key, uh, some camera key points that we're going to be camera tracking points to do something super, super cool with our big reveal video. With a portfolio video, that's yeah, right. it's going to be neat. Yep. So stay tuned. Bitcoin said new all-time high for hash rate last week. Uh, Preston Pish, or is it Pish? I don't know. Host of the Investor's Podcast, I Changing Behavior and Bitcoin's Hash Ribbons Metric. For signs of a new hash rate lull, Bitcoin has overcome considerable odds over the past year to see all-time highs in mining. Uh, first, of course, the exodus from uh, China to Kazakhstan for Bitcoin mining. Full recovery happened on both occasions. Hash ribbons use two simple moving averages of hash rate to assess miner health. Yada, yada, yada. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here. Um... Anyways, you guys can see the uh, the price compared to the hash rate. You can see usually as hash rate is increasing, price is increasing. When hash rate is decreasing, price is decreasing. This here is what you call a bullish divergence. What is a bullish divergence? A bullish divergence is when you have something in a chart that is extremely bullish that is not the price. It, it runs counter to the price. So when the price is dropping, but let's say you have the RSI rising, that is a bullish divergence. So similarly here, you're seeing this, there is a bullish divergence with the hash rate. The hash rate is bullish, increasing, 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 price going down and sideways. In the past, when you've seen increases in this, generally you see increases as well. In the price, you can see here, here's a good example, price going up, hash rate going up, hash rate going up, price going up. You can see that right there. 